A girl wrote tens of thousands of numbers in this exam. She did not stop writing, despite the fact that time was up. The teacher decisively took away the paper, which triggered the girl's displeasure. After the lesson, she suddenly disappeared. The entire school conducted a massive search and eventually found her in the basement, her hands covered in blood and her unfinished numbers carved into the walls. Fifty years later, during the school's anniversary, a time capsule is discovered from the ground, containing the very same test papers that were taken 50 years ago, and a boy happens to have gotten his hands on the paper filled with numbers. In the evening, the boy's father, who was a physics professor, overheard the strange numbers and became interested in them. He found that several of the numbers were strikingly similar to those of the September 11th incident. Not only was the time the same, but even the number of people killed was the same. So, he wrote all the numbers on the blackboard and then checked them one by one on the internet, and the results surprised him. Surprisingly, these numbers corresponded to the major global disasters in the past 50 years. What was even more amazing was that each set of numbers was amazingly accurate. He was completely stunned. These numbers were all written 50 years ago. Could someone predict the future? What was even more horrifying was that there were three other sets of numbers on the board that hadn't happened, and one was worse than the other. He immediately told his best friend about it, but she thought it was just a prank. Since some of the numbers he didn't understand either, he couldn't refute it. Soon it was time for the first prophecy, and he stayed glued to the TV to see what kind of disaster would result. After waiting all night for nothing to happen, he slept until it was time for his son to get out of school, and when he drove to pick him up, he ran into a traffic jam. He inadvertently saw the numbers on his navigation, and suddenly realized how they looked a little familiar. He took out the prophecy and took a closer look, and my goodness, it turned out that the numbers he didn't understand before were actually coordinates. This also means that a disaster is about to happen at his current location. He immediately got out of his car and asked the police why there was a traffic jam ahead. Instead, the police told him that it was just the result of a minor traffic accident. As soon as the words left his mouth, the policeman looked behind him in horror. It was a large airplane that was about to crash, with its wings slicing through and the highway quickly breaking up, followed by an explosion. The air disaster had been predicted 50 years ago, and there was a great deal of wailing. Survivors were also killed by a secondary explosion. Jake watches this with deep sorrow and remorse, knowing the time and place of the disaster, but unable to save anyone. In order to stop the impending disaster, Jake seeks the help of Lisa, the daughter of the prophecy girl, hoping to get information about the prophecy from her. However, when Jake makes his intentions known, Lisa immediately leaves with her daughter and asks Jake to stay away from her and her daughter. He follows the second prophecy to find the place where something might have happened and soon spots what looks like a bad guy who flees at the sight and takes the opportunity to jump onto the approaching subway. Eventually, with the help of the agents, he manages to catch the man, only to find out that he's just a crook. At that moment, a high-speed subway suddenly rushes by, a scene that can only be described as tragic. Though he knew it was coming, there was nothing he could do to stop it. When he arrived home, he found Lisa standing in front of the door with her daughter. It turned out that his mother had predicted that Lisa would die in a few days on October 19th. Lisa had been reluctant to believe that her mother's prophecy would come true until she saw the subway accident today. Lisa remembers that her mother's belongings are in the old house, so she and Jake drive there to see if they can find any new clues. That's when Lisa sees the last awkwardly written words in her mother's prophecy. She says that her mother had a habit of rearranging letters into threes and that the two words should mean something. They find some photos of the disaster in the room. There's also a tattered Bible on the table and a pile of pebbles found under the bed. Jake lifted up the bedpan on the floor and the two men were amazed to discover that the two words meant all people. In other words, the last prophecy is about the end of the world. When a horn suddenly sounds outside the house, Jake and Lisa run out to make sure the kids are safe and start chasing the stranger. They see a mysterious man facing Jake, seemingly waiting for him. The man opens his tiny mouth and instantly emits a powerful 5 kilowatt light. When Jake comes back to his senses, the mysterious man has disappeared without a trace. Jay, it can only return to confer with Lisa. And as they examine the pictures they brought back, Jake suddenly realizes that the end of the world actually refers to abnormal solar activity when the sun passes through the atmosphere and destroys all life on Earth. Lisa suggests that Jake take the boy into an underground bomb shelter where survival may be possible and they rush home to pack. At this point, the boy, however, keeps writing strange numbers on a piece of paper as if stimulated. Jake snatches his paper, but he continues to write on the table. This scene is extremely similar to the scene 50 years ago. Therefore, Jake immediately drove to the school and found the door panel where the girl had written the numbers in blood back then. He scraped off the paint and immediately revealed a string of numbers. Jake believes that the coordinates could be the hope for humanity's salvation, but Lisa doesn't think so, so she continues on to the bomb shelter for shelter with her two children. On the way, Lisa goes to a gas station to fill up her car, and when she turns around, the car is unexpectedly driven away by the mysterious man. An anxious Lisa grabs a car and gives chase, but halfway through the accident, she never escapes. On the prophesied day of October 19th, Jake, who followed the coordinates to the location of the fable, found Lisa's car abandoned on the side of the road. 
At this point, the mysterious man reappear, and Jake points a gun at the mysterious man to ask about the whereabouts of the child. While at this point, his son runs out happily, holding a small white rabbit. It turns out that these mysterious people are from an alien planet, and the two children are the children of Earth chosen by the aliens. Looking at the flying saucer in the sky, Jake directly kneels down to his son and prepares to take him away with him. However, the aliens tell him that only the chosen ones can leave. With no choice, Jake had to lie to his son that he would arrive later. Seeing the two children boarding the flying saucer successfully, Jake's heart felt relieved. People who know that the end of the world is coming began to flee. Jake returned to his parents and the family hugged tightly, waiting for the end of the world. The two children also settle down on another planet and take up the task of passing on human civilization. The movie ends here. The movie Mystery Code is a thriller science fiction film that was released in 2009. The plot is set in 1959 at William Dawes Elementary School in Lexington, Massachusetts, USA, where a young girl, Lucinda Amberley, comes up with an idea that is adopted by the principal. On the school's anniversary, students will draw their own visions of the future and put them together in a metal time capsule to be buried in the ground, ready to be reopened in 50 years. The movie is a unique look at the unknown and fear of the future for mankind. The prophetic codes in the movie are thought-provoking. It reminds us to focus on the present and cherish the life we have now, while at the same time warning us to face up to the challenges we may face in the future. That's it for today's story. If you like me, please like and follow me.